Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. I hope you're doing well. You know guys, I'm just going for a walk this beautiful, you know guys, morning and it was on my heart to make a video, you know, because I haven't made a video for a while. You know guys, I want to encourage my brother. I want to encourage my sister to not give up. To know that this walk with the Lord is like a pilg pilgrimage. Like it's like a a journey you know guys and there are twists and turns along the way there are you know there are times that that are, are troublesome there are times that are testing there are storms in this life there are you know um, you know guys people that demons will use against you there are demons that are attacking you my brother and my sister in Christ, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against demons. Hallelujah. And you know, guys, I just want to encourage you, you know, guys, to really, to really take every thought captive that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. You know, guys, because the devil wants to use this to get through into your life. You know guys, Jesus said, if you just look at a woman, or if you're a man, if you just look at a man to lust for them, you've committed adultery in your heart. You know guys, we know that if you get angry with, with your brother, Jesus said, you know, you've committed murder in your heart. You know guys, so we see that sin starts up here when the devil tempts you. When you when you when you when you make your mind up when you make your mind up yeah that, that's a good way of saying it then you choose to follow through with the sin Adam and Eve were in the garden you know guys and Satan spoke to them you know guys just words you know did God really say this did God really say you would die you know guys and then in their minds they made up their mind through hearing a lie you know guys and that's why, therefore, that's why it says, take every thought captive in obedience to Christ. You know, guys, it is written that God will not let us be tempted beyond more than we can bear. You know, guys, that's a powerful scripture. You know, guys, another powerful scripture that, you know, guys, might help someone today is, is therefore submit yourself unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee. You know, guys, you know, guys, you know, guys, walking along the Christian path, you know, living the Christian life, having a relationship with God is so rewarding. It's so rewarding. You know, guys, um, for me personally, like I was saying this to the, I was saying this to someone, I was, I was saying it to the Lord the other day that. The, the, the longer I'm a Christian, the longer I've been a Christian, the more I've gotten to know God. You know, guys, it's just like when you get to know someone, you know, um, you might meet someone, but you don't get to know them all on that one day that you met them. It takes time. It takes living together or, or not living together. It takes meeting up and keeping a relationship to really get to know, to get to know that person. In the same way, it takes time to get to know the Lord. You know, guys, and it can, you know, guys, and we can learn false theology. You know, guys, that's a big one. A big stumbling block for many Christians is false theology. You know, we just um, listen to any Tom, Dick, and Harry on YouTube or in any church, and, you know, we just believe whatever they say. You know, guys, and, um, you know, guys, I just want to testify since getting to know a theologian, someone who knows scripture, the depth, the depth of scripture has really helped me to debunk a lot of false theologies in my own personal life that I believed growing up, you know, guys. And um, what, what I want to share today is, is that you, you don't give up, you know, guys, when the waters of life are raging you know guys this 
if I show you this area, you know guys, this area looked a lot different before the flood came through. You know guys, you can see trees have been, you know, trees have fallen and, you know guys, even over here, this used to be a path. Now it's just, it's just completely underwater. And you can see a trees have been smashed. You know guys, this used to be a path. You know guys, and it's just a complete, you know, there's a big tree there and it's just completely underwater. Sometimes that's how our life can feel as a Christian. You know, guys, God may close one path and he may open another one. You know, guys, sometimes we just have to walk by faith. You know, guys, well, it says walk by faith and not by sight. But, you know, guys, it's not always easy walking by faith. Because we have physical eyes. We also have spiritual eyes. And you know, Jesus said, my sheep, they hear my voice and they follow me and they don't listen to strangers. But you know guys, us human beings, we normally, we want to have a 10 year plan. We want to have it already set in our mind, set in stone of how we're going to reach our goal and how we're going to do this and how we're going to do that. But the way of Jesus Christ is different. You know, guys, because the reality is, is Jesus said, those who are born of the Spirit, those who are born again, they are like the wind. You know, when the wind comes, you can see the effect that it has on the leaves on the tree, but you don't know where the wind came from and you don't know where the wind's going. Jesus is saying in the same way, it is like that for those who are born again. You know, guys, and sometimes that's what our life can look like. You know, guys, sometimes our life looks like, you know, we don't, we, people look at us and they think, man, I don't know where he came from and I don't know where he's going, but I can see what he's doing in his life. You know, guys, sometimes we've got to be like that, that, that wind going through the branches. We've got to be open to God. We've got to be available to God. You know, guys, if we, you know, we, if we were doing the typical nine to five, you know, job and doing what everyone else is doing in this world, you know, guys, Possibly we might not be able to fulfill God's plan or purpose in our life. You know, guys, sometimes God calls us to a more flexible lifestyle. You know, guys, missionaries, you know, guys, they don't have a nine to five job. They often go to a country that's quite dangerous and they live, you know, very basic. And But they're, they're available to God and God uses them to tell people of the gospel and to help people to build houses, to help disabled people, to heal the sick, etc. Sometimes as a born again believer, our life can be like this. You know, guys, I certainly have experienced this missionary lifestyle of just believing God. You know, Jesus said, you know, guys, the birds in the field, they neither reap nor sow, yet your heavenly father provides for them. You know, Jesus goes on to saying they don't build a little house and they don't have a little, you know, bank where they store all their food. You know, they just, they, they just live their life and God takes care of them. You know, Jesus goes on to saying how much more valuable or how much more important are you than these animals? You know, guys, you know, guys, learning to live by faith is, um, is a beautiful thing. It's an experience. You know, guys, many born-again believers don't learn to live by faith. They trust their hand to be their provider. They trust their doctor to be their healer. You know, guys, and some of them even trust their government to be their savior. You know, guys, it ought not to be this way, my brother. It ought not to be this way, my sister. There's nothing wrong with, you know, using your hands to, to make a living. There's nothing wrong with getting medicine from your doctor. If you take medicine, keep on taking your medicine from your doctor. And there's nothing wrong with looking up to the government, you know, guys, because God put them there to take care of the land and take care of you. But the first and the greatest commandment commands us to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. You know, guys, and this message that I'm sharing is not something that you can really put into practice by just you know, listening and, and saying, I'm going to do it like this. It's, a, it's to be led by the Holy Spirit, you know, guys. 
as a, as a babe in Christ, I used to listen to a lot of preachers and their testimonies. And I thought, oh, I'm going to, you know, have a prayer life like this guy. And I'm going to live like this guy. And I'm going to have a ministry like this guy. But it's not that way, my brother. It's your relationship with God that enables God to mold you to be more Christ-like. It's your relationship with God that enables God to use you. According to John 15, when you abide in Christ, then you bear fruit. You know, guys, so I just want to encourage you today not to give up. I just want to encourage you today that the Christian walk is not as black and white as many churchgoers, you know, live their life. And there's nothing wrong with churchgoers. Hallelujah. You know, guys, I, I had this thought in my mind. There's a there's a there's a well-known preacher on um, YouTube, and he and he does street preaching with his wife all over the world. I think it's called Christ Forgiveness. Um, the name of the YouTube channel, and you know, guys, and the enemy was trying to make me compare myself to that to that brother in Christ who preaches repentance on the streets. And I believe the Holy Spirit just spoke to me and said, Ben, we are saved by grace through faith, lest any man should boast. You know, guys, if God is not guiding you, you know, to be a teacher, then don't be a teacher. If God is not guiding you to be a preacher, then don't be a preacher. If God is not guiding you, you know, to, to be in the deliverance ministry, then don't be in the deliverance ministry. If God is not guiding you to do something, then don't do it. A lot of people look at other Christians and they say, oh, I've got to do what they're doing. Could you imagine if David, king, before he became king, you know, read about Jonah and said, I'm going to do what Jonah did. I'm going to go to Nineveh and preach repentance. Or could you imagine if Jacob, before God, you know, changed his name to Israel, you know, said, oh, I'm going to do, I'm going to do what Moses did. And I'm going to go to Mount Sinai and talk to the Lord there and, you know, guys, and maybe God will give me some new commandments. You know, guys, or could you imagine if Peter, you know, read about Elijah? And, you know, guys, Peter, you know, from the New Testament, was reading the old, the Torah of, of, of Elijah and said, I'm going to do what Elijah's doing. I'm going to go and, you know, um, be a prophet and I'm going to go and, 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 and you know, s snuff out and, and get any false... Um, you know, religions like Elijah did, how Elijah killed those 300 false prophets, you know, and brought fire down from heaven. You know, guys, no, God's got a specific will and purpose for your life that's different from the person next to you. So don't, you know, guys, don't, um, don't compare yourself to other believers. That's a snare. That's a trap of the enemy. It's true. Iron sharpens iron. It's true that we got to encourage one another and, you know, stir each other up for good works, etc. But never compare yourself. If you really want to compare yourself to someone, compare yourself to Jesus Christ. You know, guys, compare yourself to Jesus Christ. And you will find that there is no one as perfect and as holy and as righteous and as powerful as Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Who takes away the sins of the world the lamb of god rather who takes away the sins of the world you know guys jesus loves you you know guys hallelujah you know guys we are saved by grace through faith least any man should should boast that's why we walk by faith and not by sight that's why without faith it's impossible to please god because if you don't have faith how can you be saved and if you go to hell that's not going to please god you know what's going to please God? Is if you believe what John 3.16 says. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus came so that so not one, one person would be lost. You know, guys. If you want to please God, you know, guys, it even says that, that the work that God has us to do is to believe. In the Son of God, it's to believe in Jesus. You know, guys, it's a walk of faith. Paul said we fight the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. Fight the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. You know, guys. 
So I want to encourage someone today not to give up. Whatever you're facing, just forget about it. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all your worries and anxieties on the Lord because He cares for you. Give it to the Lord. You know, guys. You know, guys. Give it to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I, and I want to encourage my brother and my sister in Christ to fight. Fight not to fall into sin. We, we all know that, you know, it says, if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. You know, Jesus Christ. You know, guys. You know, guys. If we confess our sins to God, He is faithful and just to, to cleanse us and to forgive us from all unrighteousness. The righteous person may fall seven times. But you know, guys, I want to encourage you that we are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. We can overcome sin. Hallelujah. You know, guys. You know, guys, you can overcome sin. Hallelujah. You know, guys, I've fallen many times. You know, guys, just as you have fallen many times. You know, guys, I have not met one perfect believer. You know, guys, but I've met believers who love God with all their heart, mind, soul and strength. And who make mistakes, but they quickly repent. They quickly get back on the straight and narrow path and keep on following the good Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus loves you so much. You know, guys, be open to what it is God is putting on, on your heart. You know, guys, some of you, God is putting it on your heart to help that disabled person in your church. God is putting it in your heart to give to someone who, who doesn't, you know, who doesn't have much, you know, guys, you know, guys, many people, you know, guys, in this world, you know, are starving to death. Many people in this world, you know, guys, are, are living like refugees. And, you know, guys, I always encourage people to be led by the Holy Spirit. You know, guys, be led by God when you give, you know, guys, because there's a lot of crooked people. There's a lot of crooked organizations out there who will steal your money there's a lot of homeless people who will ask for money but if you go to give them food they'll throw it back in your face because they want the money for tobacco for alcohol for drugs or for something sinful you know guys so use wisdom you know before you give you know guys and the greatest wisdom you can use is be led by God you know guys because Satan wants to steal kill and destroy. He, Satan wants to steal your money, you know guys. Satan wants you to, to have a destroyed, you know, life and he wants to kill you. That's, that's what Satan's been doing since the very beginning. But Jesus came to give you life and life more abundantly. You know guys, but um, I'm getting into preaching, but I, I really, I just wanted to share, you know, don't give up. Whatever you're facing, don't give up. Because Jesus loves you, my brother. Jesus loves you, my sister. You know, guys, um, it's a beautiful thing when God uses you. It's a beautiful thing when you bear fruit for Him. You know, guys, and it's not always the way that you think that God's going to use you. It's not always the way that you think that, you know, you're going to work for the Lord. You know, guys, there may be a season in your life where you're, where you're bearing, you know, raspberries. Or there may be a season in your life where you're bearing tomatoes or you're bearing, you know, well, I don't know if it's tomatoes or fruit, but you're bearing oranges or apples or, you know, guys, whatever, you know, guys. The point is we abide in Christ, then we bear fruit, you know, guys. It's not, we, you know, it's, we don't wake up in the morning and say, you know, today I'm going to bear, I'm going to, I'm going to grow mangoes on my branch or I'm going to, I'm going to grow, you know, all these berries and, and, and no, we just, put God first and then God uses us and we bear fruit fruits of the Holy Spirit you know fruits of helping people fruits of doing the the good work that the good Lord has prepared for us hallelujah you know guys Jesus loves you so much you know never give up keep on fighting the good fight of faith hold on to your faith just like you're holding on to Jesus's hand you know guys Jesus loves you Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.